Good morning from Port Hardy, British Columbia. Absolutely beautiful. The sun is coming out. A lot of ducks on the water. And I have just been served this takeout breakfast. I've just picked up from the restaurant. So they gave me hot coffee, cutlery set, and I haven't looked at this yet. No, not bad at all. So two sunny set up eggs, sausage, bacon, hash browns, not bad at all. This is included in the room rate, so nice little takeout meal that they provide. But yeah, definitely enjoying my time here at the Glen Lion Inn. My goal today is to head to Port McNeil, which is 30 minutes away from Port Hardy, small little village. And there they have the BC Ferries Terminal that heads to Alert Bay, which is a First Nations community that has a, just a huge amount of totem poles, including the largest totem pole in the world. So I'd love to see that if possible. I'm gonna do some logistical work here to see when the buses leave, when the ferries leave, see if it'll all work out today. In any case, I do plan on seeing a little bit more of the North Coast here before I pick up a rental car and then drive out to Campbell River, which is kind of halfway down Vancouver Island and where most of the civilization begins. So we'll see what pans out in the next few days. I don't have any firm plans or anything, just taking it a day at a time, but I am definitely enjoying my time here in Port Hardy and a beautiful property here at the Glen Lion. Definitely some amazing views here. Here is the Glen Lion Inn where I'm staying. Beautiful location overlooking the harbor here in Port Hardy. I am off to the bus stop right over there to catch the bus to Port McNeil. Well, thankfully there's a bus stop right here outside of my hotel. So I'm gonna catch the bus right now down to Port McNeil, 36 kilometers down the highway. From there, I'll get on the BC Ferry to Alert Bay, which is one of the communities that is richest in First Nations culture here on Vancouver Island. I cannot wait for this day. It is extremely cold outside, but I'm definitely not going to miss the opportunity to see a little bit more First Nations culture in the area and explore some more of Vancouver Island's north. I just got dropped off here at the Port McNeil Ferry Terminal. Uh, the ferry doesn't leave for about an hour, so I'm gonna go wander Port McNeil for a little bit here. It, the ferry doesn't leave for, again, 45 minutes to an hour, so we got some time to kill in this small town. So this is Port McNeil Harbor. Beautiful little harbor. This is a very small village. There's only about 300 people that live here, but it is the launching off point to head over to Sointula which is that community right across the channel. And then Alert Bay, which is on Comoront Island. It's about 35 minutes from here by ferry. <laughs> a beautiful setting though. Just like Port Hardy, but uh, you know, much more small and quaint. Definitely a cute harbor. Tons of small little boats here. I'm gonna go check and see if they have a cafe here in town. It is a pretty small village, so I'm not really expecting much, but hopefully they have a, at least some local coffee that I can try while I'm here. So here's the entrance to the harbor, gateway community of the Bruton Archipelago, Port McNeil. So I'm looking forward to checking out some of the islands of the Bruton Archipelago today. I want to be seized treasures and it's very remote. It's actually, like I said, quite hard to get up here. It takes a lot of effort and then these ferry rides to get out there. So this is the village of Port McNeil. Very tiny. I'm gonna go up to the main street there. I heard there's a cafe called Tia's Cafe. That's supposed to be pretty good. Very, very small though, 300 people. So this is the world's largest tree burl that was cut from a large tree on display here in Port McNeil, right next to the community hall. It is pretty big. It's like something out of a science fiction movie. Very cool. Alright, I'm gonna head into Tia's Cafe to get a warm drink before I board the ferry. It's a cute cafe. So they sell some Mexican foods here too. I already picked myself up an Americano here from Tia's Cafe. Uh, this was $5.50, so a little bit on the pricier side for Americano, but hope it's good. That is the weakest Americano I think I've ever had in my life, to be honest. $5.75 down the drain. Oh, I hate when this happens. Maybe other drinks at the cafe are good, but whew, if you come to Port McNeil, don't go to Tia's Cafe for an Americano. 
It's one of those I'm actually struggling to finish. Whew. At least it's warm and it's cold out, so it's perfect for that. All right, boarding the ferry to Alert Bay, BC. So it's definitely not as comfortable as the ferry from Prince Rupert. But you can see pretty basic seating. The nice window is overlooking the sea. And this crossing should take about 40 minutes to get over to Alert Bay. All right, the rain is coming down pretty heavily right now, so it's going to be a wet one this afternoon. I'm only going to stay here about three hours and then head out. All right, I have arrived here on Cormorant Island in the village of Alert Bay. It is raining, not that hard, but raining enough. Or I think my experience is going to be a bit soured by that. But I just got off the ferry. The next one doesn't leave for three hours, which is a perfect amount of time to go sightsee and grab a bite to eat before I head back to Port McNeil. And if you want to, I'll get you flowers waiting around the bend. Maybe let's just pretend. I want to stay like this forever. I want to stay right here with you. I want to stay right here with you. As the rest we fall until it all breaks down. But I need it so. I'm heading into town here, so you can see that Alert Bay is home to the Namgus First Nation and tons of totem poles all around the village. So it's about a 1.5 kilometer walk to the center of the village. And then it's a further 250 meters or so up to the world's largest totem pole. Beautiful harbor though here in Alert Bay, you can see very small. Beautiful mist and shrouded mountain peaks there in the distance too. Absolutely beautiful. So 1,500 people call Alert Bay home. Definitely a lot of First Nations culture around the town. You can see already even on some of the houses here, you can see First Nations art. Very cool. So apart from the beautiful waterfront, these gazebo type structures are called awakwas and they're a traditional part of the local culture here along the harbor. And each one of these awakwas bears an image that is devoted or represents one of the different clans of the tribe here on Cormorant Island. So another super impressive awakwa. You can see this imagery is just outstanding. Really interesting. Alert Bay is clearly one of the richest cultural towns in British Columbia. I've only walked about 500 meters and I've seen so much already. I mean, the ferry terminal is just right there behind me. So there's just tons to see in this small little village on this small little island in the middle of nowhere. So this is the Numgus First Nation net loft. So pretty much a building where they would organize their nets. It's long since abandoned, built in the early 20th century. Such a beautiful waterfront here, absolutely incredible. As you can see, there's some totem poles even on people's front yards. So this one is really impressive, probably tells the story of their family. Really cool, right outside the person's house. And on the other side here is another one of these awakwas with a really impressive eagle to represent this clan. So this is the last of the Awakwas along the coast here in Alert Bay. This one's really unique too, a white eagle carrying a fish. And over here you can see the actual language here, which is very unique. There's a lot of X's and W's. It's a very unique language. So I cannot describe just how cold it is right now. It's not really the temperature, it's actually 6 degrees Celsius out, but very fierce wind coming from the Arctic. So extremely cold, at least plus the dampness of the air, and it just is bone chilling cold outside. So I hope I don't catch anything uh, that could be mistaken for COVID because that would mean I can't board an airplane home. But hopefully I'll be okay. I'm gonna drink some tea and to warm myself up a bit, but it's definitely worth it. I'm really glad I get to see these wakwas, very cool culture. And right over here in the Umista, I think it's called the Umista Cultural Center. And totem poles pretty much everywhere, including one that looks like it's 
Seems like it's worse for wear, but it's actually, I think, supposed to be a horizontal totem pole. I'm gonna also go check out the tallest totem pole in the world, which is about 250 meters into the center of the island up there. I'm taking a closer look at this beautiful mural on the longhouse. So cool. I'm gonna check if they're open. It would be great to go inside and learn a bit more about the culture here in Alert Bay. But that is incredible. Really cool longhouse. First Nations art is incredibly complex and detailed and symbolic. So it's rich with details that go beyond the surface level details that you can see. Beautiful setting here, right along the waterfront in Alert Bay. So I'm not sure of the significance here, but this is a, looks like a downed totem pole. I'm not sure if it was supposed to be erected or if it will be, but definitely intricate. You can see just how finely detailed these are. After a short walk from the center of town, I have made it to the cable stayed tallest totem pole in the world here in Alert Bay, British Columbia. Let me get a closer look at it because you basically cannot see much detail from this far away. It just looks like a massive pylon, but that is pretty tall. Just to give you an idea of the surroundings here, there's another longhouse there in the distance. But yeah, pretty big totem pole. This totem pole stands 173 feet tall, which is not able to be freestanding. So again, it is anchored by guide wires. So taking a look at this very incredible longhouse, I love the colors on this. You can also see on the door, if you look closely, there is this figure, this relief that's etched into the door. Very cool culture. I can't believe how much there is to see for such a small little town on a very small island. Very cool. This longhouse is incredible. The world's tallest totem pole. Pretty cool. I'm going to try to pop into the cultural center if I have some time, but it's going to take me at least 25 to walk back to the ferry terminal. And there's no taxis here, so I got a race. So some interesting graffiti I found here. This is the concession booth, I guess, for the local field. Yeah, interesting. University of Hip Hop Namgis. That's the tribe's name once again. All right, getting out of here, gotta rush. So I'm here at the Umista Cultural Center, but this actually used to be the site of the St. Michael's Residential School, which was torn down in 2015, thankfully. So I would have loved to check out the Umista Cultural Center. You can see some impressive totem poles here out front and a really cool carving over here. But they are closed, likely due to COVID. So I guess next time, if I'm ever back in the area, that will be on the top of my list. It is raining like mad outside. I have about 25 minutes to get back to the ferry terminal, which is that white speck right down there. So I got to rush and I got to run through the rain, unfortunately. So bald eagle sighting right here. Very cool. Man, I wish I got that in HD. Unfortunately, I didn't. So I am saying goodbye to Alert Bay, British Columbia. Definitely enjoyed my time here soaking up a bit of the local culture. I'm off to run now through the rain for one kilometer to the ferry terminal way down there. I already made it back here to the ferry terminal. Got 15 minutes till departure. Uh, so it should be another 40 minute trip back over to Port McNeil. It was a very nice time there in Alert Bay. Uh, very cold and wet, but at least I got to see a lot of the cultural elements around town. So that was good. I'm gonna get to Port McNeil here in about 40 minutes. 
probably a good 30 minute layover there before the bus goes back to Port Hardy, but that's pretty much my last opportunity to get back to Port Hardy before dark, which is preferred. So I should get back to town at about 6 to 6.30 p.m. or so. All right, I'm back in Port McNeil. Unfortunately, I got a, about an hour and a half wait now because the bus schedules are so sparse right now. All right, I'm not even sure what this place is called, but I'm gonna go try their coffee. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, are you? Good, I can't see though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, I am trying out an Americana at Mug 2.0 here in Port McNeil. So it's definitely nice to warm up with a hot drink. Much better than the Utias, for sure. Stronger. It's still a little bit mild, but it's pretty good. It's just the water to espresso ratio. It's really hard to get right. Probably just needs one more shot of espresso to be excellent. So the bus leaves in about 15 minutes or so. Gonna walk back down towards the ferry terminal. Got myself some snacks here at the local grocery store. But yeah, it's kind of painful waiting for the next bus, that's for sure. Nice enough town though. You're very similar to Port Hardy, it's just a lot smaller. So I just picked up a micro brew from Stanley Park Brewing. It only cost me $2.50 a can, which is a steal. That would cost me $4 a can back home, so I'm not sure why that is so cheap, but I'm not going to complain. Hi, how are you? Port Hardy. Four bucks-ish? Okay, that's good. Thank you. After a 30 minute bus ride from Port McNeil, I've arrived here back at the Glenline Inn. Tomorrow, I plan on renting a car and driving out to Campbell River. So getting about halfway down Vancouver Island, more or less. And we'll see how that turns out. Otherwise, I'm stuck here till Saturday. All right, home sweet home.